Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. We're going to talk about images this week. Now, there are two types of images that are used in our software. And I noticed there was a lot of confusion. I was in San Diego a couple of weeks ago, and I had several questions on this. So I realized, even though we've addressed it in the past, we don't have a clear um, understanding of images. Images, there are two types in Floriani. There are backdrop files which we can find right here up in the Backdrops Library folder in the upper right hand corner. And then we have artwork files, which is kind of like in our custom shapes where we've got files that are artwork. Anything that is a vector file is an artwork file. So we've got two types. Now let's look at these real quick. I'm going to go ahead and come into my Backdrops Library and I'm going to select a backdrop file. Now a backdrop files extension will be a JPEG, a bitmap, a BMP, um, a TIFF, a GIF. Those are made out of pixels. Now let me show you what I mean. If I come in here, you notice the more I zoom in, the more confusing the lines of delineation get and it makes it very difficult in software for software to perfectly pick out where is the line you want me to follow? And sometimes it gets so confusing, you can't even tell one color from another. So we're going to look at this and look at what do we do to work with these two different types of files. Now JPEGs are usually what you and I have to work with, which in the world of digitizing or creating stitches, JPEGs are not at the top of the food chain vector files are. Now let's bring in a vector file and see what's the difference. So let me come in here to just these shapes right here. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to get something that's a couple of colors just so we can kind of get the idea here. Let's bring in this pumpkin. Now we're going to bring in this pumpkin. I'm going to get my little caterpillar and move him to a side here. And we're going to move the pumpkin over now. Let's go ahead and just fit it to screen so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Now, we've already looked at him when we zoomed in. We decided we did not like that. Now, let's look at our pumpkin. Ooh, see how nice the delineation. There is no confusion. And the minute I selected that, I want you to know all the segments of that pumpkin came up in my sequence view because these are pieces of artwork I can now immediately turn in to stitch types. Whereas when I select my little caterpillar here, there is nothing over here. He never shows up. Because basically what he is, is he's sitting behind the desktop. Think of tracing. So we could trace him. Now, the first way we could trace him is, of course, we could manually trace him. So I could come get my complex fill, and I could start left mouse clicking all the way around. So I could manually use it as a tracing just like when we were kids and we ta traced over a light box Oops, I got away from me come on baby my computer is running extremely slow and we are just going to come here and when we get close I never close it I go ahead and let the program I come down to the bottom left hand corner and I let the program close it because that'll be Perfect. Now the angle line comes up. So I could pick the angle on these stitches. Now when I right click, it's going to say, where do you want to start? And it suggests a start and a stop. So I'll go with their start and their stop. And now it will do the stitches. So if I come in here and I go ahead and 3D that, I have created stitches. And it's only as good as my trace. Now, of course, nobody will see the artwork after I'm done because we'll simply turn the artwork off and they won't know whether I traced it perfect or not. So that certainly is an option. But let's undo that. Now, the next thing I can do is I can come up here and I can get my magic wand. What this does is it creates an outline over areas. And I want you to notice this word with similar color. It says similar color. That's the problem. The color kind of gets nebulous when it starts dithering or making all those little squares out. But I'm going to left mouse click and you know really 
it does a fairly good job here. Not perfect, but good. And then I'd come back and I could do the feet. And I could do his little antennas and his little eyeballs and his mouth. So now what I did is I created with him, oops, I'm sorry, let's fit it to screen again. I have created artwork around my little guy here. So now, once I've done that, I can come in and I can select that artwork, and you can see it's here. There's all the artwork I just created for my little guy. Okay, that's good, but it's not great. You can see here the mouth could be better. You can see the imperfections in the way I'm doing it. But sometimes it's great, because realize we're, we're very critical. We zoom in a million times and think everybody can see that, you know, tenth of a millimeter gap, which they cannot. So that's the next way we could have done this. So let's undo that guy. Now I will show you my preferred method if I'm going to have to work with backdrop files. So I'm going to get a new piece of paper. I'm going to come in to my wizard. Now here's my wizard and I'm going to, if I want to pick stitches for each section, I'm going to use my auto artwork wizard. Now I have gone to select an image. We're going to select our little caterpillar and we're going to open. We're going to go to next. Now you're going to set the size that you want this. I want him to be about three inches long. Set it before you turn it into stitches. Next. Now it's going to tell me I think I see these four colors. And now it's going to delineate everything with this next. And you noticed there was so much uh, dithering in here it blended. So that's not going to work for us. So let's go back. Let's go to edit image. It's going to open Microsoft Paint, which is in everybody's computer that has Windows. It's just a portion of Windows. I'm going to come up here to this set of icons. I'm going to click on my pail. I'm going to grab the red because it's a big difference in color. So now with that being a high contrast, I'm going to say file, save. Now I'm going to quit and it's going to show up just like this. So now when I go to next, it sees and notice how nicely and tightly it goes around all of these. Unlike our other image that was a little bit so-so. Now we're going to finish this. Now when I come in, look at how great this image now looks. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him. Ooh, looks pretty good. Like I say, we zoom in a thousand times and we think this is a major boo-boo. It's not. It's just fine. But you can see now, if I wanted to digitize him, I would select my red and say, OK, I want you guys to be a fancy fill. And then I could select my green and say, you know what, I want you guys to be a wave fill. And then I can go ahead and select my black and I would always recommend things like this. You go ahead and measure. Get your measuring tool off the left hand toolbar. Left mouse click on it and just measure. And this says, hey, use a satin. So I know these are the widest I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and say, that sounds good. Let's select the black and let's use an auto satin. Now I have digitized my little guy. Now I would come in and fine tune. This wave fill is fine, but it's a little too close for me. So I would come in and start adjusting. You get the idea. You can come in and play and enjoy and take it through the artwork wizard. Now let's go one generation further. If I go to these same wizards, I can go to auto digitize wizard. Now the artwork wizard gave me the power to change each thing by myself do each object myself. Well, what if I wanted it to start out in stitches and then me just adjust anything I didn't like? I would then go to the auto digitize wizard. This is a huge feature in Floriani software because as far as I can tell, there's not another person that has it. I haven't seen it in any other software brand. So we are going to select an image. We're going to go right back to my guy. I'm going to open, go to next, again, three inches long. I will touch next. 
Now, again, it showed me my colors. Next, did the same thing. Back up, go to Edit Image. Let's get our bucket of paint, and it's a high contrast color. And there's our contrast. File, Save, then go ahead and quit paint. There he is. Now when I go to Next, it's telling me it's going to go ahead and you can see how nicely it's delineated. When I go to Next here, now I can say Minimize Color Change, Jumps. I've got some choices here. I want to minimize jumps. There's only three color changes. And I always want lock stitches between a trim and a lock stitch when it starts. So now I'm going to finish. And now what it did is it did everything for me. Now I could come in and change anything I like. But it turned it into artwork first. Now with artwork, you cannot open artwork. There is no such thing as open artwork. You open designs. You import artwork. The only reason we can, quote, open it here is because it's already in a folder knowing that it's being imported. So we could import some artwork. Let's import an F for Floriani. Now this is artwork. Maybe I want to cut this out of vinyl. Maybe I want to use this uh, to cut letters out of fabric. Um, balsa wood. All kinds of things that I could cut with a digital cutter. I cannot save artwork. I can only export artwork. You import and export, import and export artwork. That's what we do. And that is a file that's either an SVG or an FCM that works with digital cutters, such as a Scan and Cut, a Cameo, Silhouette, Sizzix, that type thing. So if you wanted to use your software to turn things into artwork so I could cut them out, I could have used that little um, worm, that little caterpillar, I could have cut him out of vinyl to put on a kid's lunchbox. So this is a wonderful feature, that, but remember, I have to export artwork. Now I had one other question that I want to answer. Let's say I've got triangles. I'm going to use a circle because it's real easy to see. I'm going to use a circle. Now this is, again, artwork. I mean, excuse me. Yes, this is artwork. Backdrop is, in, is backdrop files. This is artwork. They're both images. So here's an artwork. Any of our artwork tools create artwork lines, those perfect clear lines. Now with this artwork, I'm going to select it. Let's select this guy. And I'm going to fill him in because I want to do a little exercise. Now if I wanted to do embossing or I wanted to cut out some some cutouts in this so I could either emboss or maybe I want to stack three triangles and put one with one fill. You get the idea. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to come in and I'm going to create a second circle only I'm going to change the color and I will go ahead and highlight it and I will fill it and I'm going to now select all items and I'm going to combine them. So now I have a hole here. Well maybe now I want to come in and get myself another circle. Let's see if I can do this in between. Pretty good. Uh, well it doesn't matter if I can or can't. I can always move it. Now I can move this one. Again I could fill it in just so you're seeing what we're doing. You don't have to fill it in. It doesn't matter a bit. Now notice I've got this negative space. So if I wanted to emboss, that would come in here. Maybe I want to take this negative space and turn it into a different fill. But you can come in here now and I could come in and start digitizing this however I liked. You could start playing with this. This is a really neat feature. So when you're stacking triangles, you're stacking squares, and you need to have some either emboss look, like on a towel where I would mat this down and let this be the come up and this would all be the negative space. There's so many things you can do with this. But I just wanted to try and clear up the difference in images. One is a backdrop, which is a JPEG or a bitmap, and the other are clear vector files, which is artwork. Remember, we load backdrops, we import artwork. So just hope you enjoyed this week. Hope that cleared up some of those questions I have. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great one.